very, very honored to be joined by special guest David Sims from the Blank Check Podcast. Hey, guys. Oh, my Woo! God! Hey. That's him! We're here because you're always teasing uh, what a huge Mario fan you are. I feel like you've been teasing fans mm-hmm. for a long time now with, maybe I'll start a video game podcast. Maybe I'll talk about Mario uh, in some capacity. And so now there's a lot of rumors bubbling about Mario's 35th anniversary. It seems like Eurogamer and VGC, everybody's reconfirming each other's sources and triple-checking it that it seems like Nintendo is going all out this year with Mario Celebration. And it was going to be revealed at E3 that there's a bunch of re-releases and remasters coming out a lot of surprises along the way uh hey uh david sims what's your history with mario um i would guess well my history is that my cousin i think the first game i ever played was my cousin had uh an nes and i would play super mario brothers in her basement with her probably from the age of five or something like that so pretty much the first video game for me and probably true for a lot of people right yeah is it uh, your favorite series you think it probably has to be i it feels sort of i mean i guess i guess zelda could make a run at it i guess okay. I, I do have a fondness for resident evil but there's nothing more sort of consistent and nothing more like you know constantly exciting than a new mario game is there any piece of entertainment that's as consistent as the Mario series. I mean, for 35 years, it is pretty absurd. I'm talking like mainline entries. I'm trying to think of just consistent releases that always knocks it out of the park at this level. It's got to be on its own. Probably, right? In terms of I mean, again, like sheer quantity, too, in terms of yeah. how many games they've released. I, I yeah. mean, I guess you could say, you could say Zelda. I guess, Zelda would right? Be but a competitor. Yeah. But Mario's longer, certainly, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's not by much. Maybe like the Winter Olympics... Always solid every yeah. year. Especially uh, once Sonic got involved. That's definitely... Bumped it up good. a notch, no doubt. Uh, so here's the actual report here. So Eurogamer uh, says, uh, the report states that Nintendo will release, quote, most of Super Mario's 35-year back catalog this year remastered for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Eurogamer sources confirm that it's Mario Galaxy, 64, and Sunshine. Uh, Eurogamer sources have also confirmed that a new Paper Mario is in the works, along with a deluxe version of Super Mario 3D World from the Wii U, which will include an array of new levels. It's uh, it's going to be overwhelming. Obviously, that Paper Mario thing is very exciting, especially because there are previous rumors that it's going to be kind of a return to form, that Intelligent Systems is going back to kind of the design of the first two Paper Marios, which I would argue are some of the greatest games ever made. Um, but with finally all these 3D Mario games in theory releasing, maybe somewhere around the realm of when the 35th anniversary would be, which is September 13th uh, this year, uh, the great question emerges of what is the best 3D Mario game. Uh, so... David Sims. Yes. What do you think is the best 3D Mario game ever made? There's a right answer. Uh, yeah. Oh, God damn. Wait, there's a right answer? Oh, 100%. We <laughs> all were talking wrong? about it. That I was the previous hour. I think have the same answer. Maybe. We'll see. Hmm. Um, well, I will say, then, that uh, for me, it would be between uh, 64 and Galaxy. Okay. 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 Any reaction to that? Good job. Good job. And <laughs> Not outrageous. I... I I mean is it boring I think I have to pick 64 well this is this is the problem David because like we were all at Game Informer for a thousand years and every time you're making a list or any sort of ranking everybody jumps in with opinions before it's ever made clear what are we actually talking about here so Jeff would you like to set the table what are we trying to make this list based on we don't know we haven't we haven't discussed that is it the best game is it the most influential or important in history you know, right? I mean, how, how much does the historical anger f- angle factor into it? I think it should be what's important now, which is going to be when these games release on the Nintendo Switch, maybe this year, however this whole thing rolls out, like what can you have the most fun playing, right? So you're saying, so this is a most fun argument. That's where I'm leaning. I say f- history, but I don't know where everybody else stands. Fun. All right. Great, we got a fun. Okay, so on a pure fun basis, David Sims, is still going 64 or Galaxy? <sighs> See, I fun is crucial, but I mean, I do <laughs> appreciate like sort of thematic qualities to these games, even though they're, you know, obviously often very simple tales. But I, st- I think, I think I'm still going to stump for 64 slightly over Galaxy. That would probably be my one and two. Yeah, I was thinking about. Do you think 64 is just the best soundtrack 
It has to be, right? Compared that, to all the 3D worlds? It's it's the most like haunting and strange of the games. I mean, if you're going by the metric of like, as you say, like when all these if the, all these games are suddenly available to me on my Switch and I can just pick and choose from any of them, I think I would play 64 first. Yeah, it's the one that I'm the most curious about, like seeing how they revamp it, what it actually looks like, how much they're going sure. to. I mean, if it's a full on remake using like Mario Odyssey's assets, which they already, you know, kind of dip their toes into the water a little bit. Kyle, you shake your head a little bit on that one. Well, I mean, I don't think it'll be that. I mean, but they they do have a precedent for that with the Super Mario All Stars on Fru- Super Nintendo, where they like you know upgraded mm. all the the levels and stuff. And then there's also the question of there's the the DS one that added like Wario and Yoshi and uh, Peach as like playable characters and oh. stuff, and added new stars. I think they added like thirty new stars. Yeah, we gotta like, add those tuss- those uh, touch controls too. Yeah, yeah it's God, gonna be crucial on the Switch for the handheld handle version. I mean, but I th- I, th- I think it'll be like I think it'll just be an HD version of the sixty four one. I don't think I think that like I don't think Nintendo's interested in like changing out the character models or anything like that. You know? Yeah, but, but it's weird when that's gonna be on the Switch and they have. At least, like, the outside castle area from Odyssey already recreated, but I think that's maybe yeah. too much. But look, Nintendo's got a gazillion dollars, right? They yeah. could they could afford it's, to have spent a couple years making this full remake of 64. And also, by the way, David, I'm so sorry to break it to you, but the correct answer was Super Mario Galaxy. That is <laughs> yeah, the best I mean, Mario game, period. I, I think that if you're going by, like, purely objective, like, sort of marrying, like, gameplay, you know, innovation, just, uh, like, that is that is probably number one i think i have i cannot avoid my nostalgia for 64 and my sort of like sort of strange love of the weird empty castle (laughs) (laughs) uh serial vasquez you're a champion for galaxy 2 over galaxy 1 why is that i i think they obviously it builds a lot on galaxy's you know fundamental basis of like hey we're gonna turn every platform into like this round sphere it's gonna be like this interesting mix of like traditional platforming and this kind of new experience that you hadn't seen before but i think uh between all the suits they add like there's a suit where you like create your own platforms with clouds and like just a bunch and adding uh yoshi in and and creating a bunch of challenges around that uh i think it probably has like the most diverse level design of any mario game and um and it was that was just like this weird game where like every other level you just saw this new idea uh like that felt like oh man they, they could have done so much more with this other concept that i was just exploring but they've already decided to introduce something new into the mix and so uh i i think there's a, there's something to be said about the the hub and galaxy that i really like in yeah. the original one um but in terms of like here's just some really well crafted levels i think from beginning to end galaxy is probably the most consistent in terms of like or galaxy 2 is the most consistent in like giving you something new to play around with in every level basically yeah you talk about like the variety it is wild thinking about like the development history of galaxy 2 where it was like well there are a lot of ideas we couldn't quite squeeze into galaxy 1 didn't fit any sort of themes that we were going for so let's just bundle all that stuff together and put it in Galaxy 2, and it's like, yeah, that's all people want from a Mario game, is just, like, the level of variety. I mean, there is something about having a sense of place, I hear you, with, like, a 64, or just to mention the, the, the name here, Sunshine hasn't been brought up, but, you know, like, having a certain distinct vibe, I think, is interesting for Mario, but at its core, I think people just want that constant variety, which is why I even love, you know, stuff like 3D Land or 3D World, where there's not, like, a concrete sense of place, but in terms of just great platforming and amazing art design, like, that's it. Uh, Jeffem, you've been quiet. What do you think about this whole thing? Yeah, I was. I'm just gonna say Galaxy was gonna be mine, but I haven't played Galaxy Two or Sunshine, so honestly, and I also really liked might, Odyssey. Might be- yeah, it, it seemed like everyone. It it seemed like there was a weird kind of counter movement against Odyssey as just being not as great as previous Mario games. I guess. I guess when you when you're judging everything against the legacy of Mario, then I guess I could see how maybe that was a disappointment, but I I did everything you could in that game and had a super fun time. Yeah, no, I hear you for sure. So uh, we had a community Twitter poll here. Um, what do y'all think won out of Mario 64, Mario Galaxy, 3D World, or Odyssey? What do you think the MinMax community preferred out of that batch? I think we skew younger, so I think it's going to go like, I think it Galaxy. Oh, interesting. Uh, Mario Galaxy and Mario Odyssey are tied at 28.7%, oh. but 64 took it. But then I had to have a follow-up poll because everybody was screaming about the lack of sunshine. So between Sunshine, Galaxy 2, and 3D Land, which do you think won, Kyle? 
I'm sorry, what were the, the choices again? Sunshine Galaxy 2 and 3D Land. Sunshine Galaxy 2 and 3D Land. I, I mean, I guess Sunshine has this weird campaign for it. So I think Sunshine, probably. I'm sorry, it was Galaxy 2, you fool. Oh, I don't know what you're thinking. I mean, that's the right choice. There is... I, Oh, go ahead, go. Like, I just, I just quickly, like, I, it's, I feel like I've weirdly come out like negative. Like, ah, uh, it's sunshine, Mario sixty four. Like, I freaking adore Mario sixty four. That game makes me so happy. Like, from that nostalgia angle, like, just, just walking around that opening area just makes me smile. But I will say, like, in terms of all the three D Mario's, which I love, Sunshine is the weakest for me. It is the only one that I didn't hundred percent. Um, and I also, someone pointed out a good, uh, a, a, or posed a good question of. How is it going to work without the the GameCube um, trigger? Analog buttons? triggers. Yeah, because there's like yeah. multiple levels of spray, and I don't know how they're going to translate that to Switch. It's God. Could they do well, like tilt or something? Like you hold down the trigger and then you like tilt a little bit more, even like with the Joy Cons or something silly like that. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could hold down, you know, Z1 and or R1 and R2. I guess, I don't know. That's their problem to solve. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, it seems like with Sunshine, it's one of those games that I just remember the GameSpot review was really low back in the day. I think it was probably like Gerstmann reviewing it or something. So it, it figures. So I always had this in my mind. They're like, oh, I know that one isn't that great. And then it wasn't until I was in college that I actually went back and played that. And I had an absolute blast. It's one of those that like. It's, it's great. It's it's just, it's super hard to me. I feel like it's the hardest 3D Mario. Hmm. I would that, agree with that. Yeah? yeah. Oh, what's your experience with Sunshine there, David Sims? I mean, I was a, a devoted GameCube owner, and so I was sort of I was that I was I resisted the PlayStation for so long, so I was by the GameCube, which is sort of my last gasp with being Nintendo only. I was all in, and I do think Sunshine is, I guess, like you're saying, it's like the weird culty one where it, <laughs> it doesn't quite fit in. It's 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 a bit of a redheaded stepchild, but like. The you know the the gameplay with the flood with the the hover it it, it, it could be pretty inventive. I don't think I ever completed a hundred percent of it either though. Yeah, yeah, it is the flood mechanic. It's like this beautiful marriage of Mario and Yoshi in a way. Like I love any platformer that has a little bit of like the jump and then the ability to hover a little bit, like Yoshi's Island, just mwah, beautiful. And so you have like right. adding that through the flood to Mario's basic skill set. I miss it at times, you know. It's a beautiful thing. Um, okay, so when, Kyle, these are released on the Switch, which will be the first one you boot up? You know, I think it'll still be Galaxy, even though I did plug in the Wii U and play the first uh, few levels of Galaxy like two weeks ago. Really? Um, yeah, but it was because like, um, it was for Mario Day, and I just made this little Twitter video like uh, about like why Galaxy was my favorite, but I still think that's the one I would be lined to, because that's the one... like it's it's been a long time before or even since the release of galaxy that like uh, my mind has been blown so much because they basically took the standard idea you know the platform which is integral to the platformer and they tweaked that in a huge way and that just like that the way that the, the fact that you could long jump into orbit <laughs> was just like incredible like that that yeah. that to me was like the that's one of the reasons why like as much as I really adore Odyssey and love Odyssey, it, like what Jeffem was talking about, like I didn't, it, it's, it, it didn't feel like as innovative after Galaxy, you know? Um, so, and that's why it was like, it, it, it's like slightly negative towards that one when it came out. It was like, I really love this game. I 100 percented it. It's great. But it didn't, it didn't innovate as much as Galaxy for me. You know? Odyssey had a T-Rex though, Kyle. That's yeah. true. And he was less that's fun that's to control than Mario himself. So right, yeah, it's a little change in the edges. Rex with a mustache. <laughs> that is, I can't deny that. That is true. That is factual. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing about Galaxy, obviously brilliant. I think one of the greatest games we've ever made. But I feel like last time we went back and played that, I feel like everybody will go back to Mario Galaxy and go back to their save and go through the levels and have a great time. But like starting a fresh game, I'm curious if your take was the same on this, Kyle. That like there's a lot more kind of bullshit story in Galaxy <laughs> than you remember. Yeah. You find yourself yeah. going through a lot of like, okay, Rosalina, Luma, got it, 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 got it. It, it really, it brings it down in my mind a couple notches. You know what game doesn't really have that? Yeah. Galaxy 2. That's true. Honestly, I think that's maybe why I prefer Galaxy 2. It doesn't have quite as much of a lore setup of what's happening on this thing. Yeah, you're just on a Mario head spaceship and <laughs> you just go from level to level. It's it's awesome. <laughs> There's all those characters that just say, don't worry about it. Don't think yeah. about it too much. It's fine. <laughs> 
the uh, the weird thing is with this report talking about how there are multiple new games in the works, and so it's unclear if they're talking about the new Paper Mario and then the deluxe version of Super Mario 3D World, which I am looking forward to. I love that game a lot. Um, or do you think that they're going to cap all this off with Super Mario Odyssey 2, which we've talked about before in the podcast? Or is that just too much Mario? It, you got to stop. Talked about this with you before, Hanson. We're not going to see Odyssey 2 this year. <laughs> so you think like the multiple games that they're talking about in these reports, that that's what that is? Is this Paper Mario and deluxe Super Mario 3D World? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. they, that's uh, they've been able to get away with the the Wii U to uh, switch ports for a while now. So, and this is one that I actually want. I love 3D World, so I would love to be able to play that on my Switch. And getting all these other games, I I think is their their plans for that. And then like the Lego set, and I guess there's like isn't there that theme park as well? Well, that, who knows now? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was in it was in the cards, right? But um. I think all of that they can get away with saying, like, this is how we're going to celebrate the... Especially if they release a new Paper Mario game, which would be pretty cool. Oh, my God. It would be very exciting. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. the Illumination film. Yeah. Oh, David, have you heard... I mean, what do you think of that? Like, Illumination handling a, a Mario movie? I mean, they are... They are a, a logical match in that I feel like they had that kind of sort of clean, cartoony visual style that Mario has gravitated towards since he became a 3D person. Uh, I've never loved an Illumination movie. They tend to be pretty, you know, sort of C plus B minus. Like, you know, they, they, they sort of stay in their lane almost a little too much. I also have no idea. I mean, like, I love the, the live action Bob Hoskins insane, terrible Super Mario Brothers movie. But I love it because it's trying to make sense of a world that does not, like, fit into, like, a sort of cinematic lane at all like so i i I, i'm just always a little resistant to like trying to explain the world of mario like in a detailed way so i I, that is my concern with that movie like what 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 will its take be yeah and i feel like just coming from usually the better yeah yeah and coming with like with the minions experience like okay maybe if a studio is going to be so bold as to not have a lot of speaking and explanation like maybe illumination is a decent fit for that but all right uh what is your what is your prediction, though, David? Do you think that Mario will say more than his basic lines? Like, will he actually speak in a meaningful way in this film? I do. God, that let me see. That's eerie. Even you saying that sent like a chill down my spine. Like, <laughs> yeah, but really like, who would voice this? him? Even well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> supposedly Miyamoto has like a major, you know, uh, hand in the creative guidance of this thing, which like I feel like is a line they tried with the original movie and <laughs> later he revealed like my only like I, I had no I had nothing to say there. Um, <laughs> but uh, like th- th- what you're saying is exactly what alarms me. Like I, I, he's going to talk like it, there's going to is there going to be like character dynamics? Like it, I'm just it, the, the whole point of Mario is that it's like very clean, simple archetype. Right. And, mm. you know, even a 90 minute movie is going to have to expand on that. Well, yeah. he, he's a vessel for jumping. And then and the whole point yes. of a movie is for us to empathize with, with that, you know, <laughs> to, for there to be like an emotional denouement at the end of a Mario movie where it's like, you know what? I really felt for Mario and Luigi at the end of that one. I think it's just absurd in every sense. Right. Well, maybe, though, just to pull from uh, what you're what you've been immersed in, maybe they just pull like a Fury Road and it's just like zooming out is just the simplest idea of Mario rescuing Peach and then they can pack Mm. in some twists and turns and fun adventures and exploration along the way. Like, I don't think they need to make it overly complicated. There's a path forward here. They're probably... Okay. All right. We'll see. Um, David Sims, uh, I appreciate on the Blank Check podcast every time that uh, you make a video game reference. I know it's so stupid that, hey, you're a younger guy, and it's just stupid to still be amazed. Be like, what? These people that know movies, they also play video games? So thank you for every time you drop a hot reference in there. Of course, and I will do my video game podcast. I mean, I don't know how to do what I sort of was thinking about now that uh, people aren't allowed to go to each other's houses, but I'll figure something out. I want to talk more video games. I've been playing them since I was a wee lad, and they are a long time and ongoing obsession of mine. Yeah, so the talk for a while was reviewing every Mario level. I think you said that at some point. I, I want to do... All right, Super Mario Please. World is the best video game of all time. Okay. And I want to do it world mm-hmm. by world. Level by level is too crazy. But I want to talk about it thematically rather than from a gameplay aspect, because I am not, you know, I, I'm not... 
qualified enough to talk about it from sort of a design perspective. But that's that's what I want to do. We'll see. We'll see how I can figure that out. Okay. I'm glad we finally got someone else on this podcast that recognizes Super Mario World as the best game. <laughs> that's ah! the best game. That's the best one. Thank you. There's a thing called Final Fantasy VII. It seems three. good. You said better than three, David. Better than three. What's the argument? It's no. I mean, you were <laughs> <need an hour. laughs> right. No, it is. It's it, the world build. It's it's a world building thing. Here, wait, when you unlock the key, it makes a little ring noise, and it's like the the keyhole closes in. All right, like that's all you need for a game. Yeah, it's very specific. Did he get so angry that he left? What did I say? I think. How he actually, dare you mention Mario three on this? Podcast. He jumped out of the window of his apartment. I do believe. <laughs> Very oh, okay. unclear. He got the right that, answer. My doorbell, my doorbell was ringing, which is a very unusual event these days. So I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and oh, it anyway. was Miyamoto thanking you for your service through all these years. Yes. Uh, yes. That's fantastic. Well, hey, uh, you're I mean, welcome. Do, oh, go ahead, quick, Kyle. Hanson, I mean, do we want to get a quick ranking like uh, from David? Like, Because that was kind all of right. a Yeah, go a for it. Do, here, right? do you have a sure. ranking for the 3D Mario game, sir? Okay. Sticking I think I would go probably. this way. Yeah. I think I'd go... 64 number one and i that's another one where i can expand on it for a long time then galaxy one and two or would be my next two tied then I, no i mean one first then two just okay. just just okay. because of again just sort of like innovation you know one one is a little more of the the milestone there right but although i do appreciate the argument of like two is simpler plot wise which is sort of sort of a bonus then i think i would put Odyssey. Then I guess I. You know what? I'll put Sunshine over 3D World and Land. 3D World and Land are games that I've only played like once. You know, and, and never got too deep into. I think I basically completed both, but they. I have the least relationship with them, and even though Sunshine is so strange and flawed, like I do, I have a little more of a soft spot for it. Yeah. All right. We'll take it as the official ranking. Congratulations, everybody. We all really did it. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, David Sims, uh, we do something here called The Deepest Dive, which is our game clubs. Uh, if we ever do Mario World, uh, we'll definitely uh, bug yes. you again at some point. Please. Okay, great. And please... Mario World, Deus Ex, the original. <laughs> what else? I'm trying to think of games that I could just talk about all day. Uh... Anyway, uh, Resident Evil 4, of course. If you enjoyed this clip from the MinMax Show podcast, we think you'll like the full show too. You can find it by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast app. Any help spreading the word to keep our whole indie operation here running is appreciated. We're here for and because of the wonderful MinMax community, so you're welcome to join. 